website. Um, in fact, I intend to uh, kind of pinch him a little bit, see if I can get some of the information off of it, use it with the, with the uh, Maricopa County Assembly. So uh, if, if everybody is about uh, ready, I see more people coming in. Thank you, Michael. How you doing, brother? You mind? Either. And there's Artie. Okay, good. This is looking pretty good. I've got to tell you, I was apprehensive at first, but it's turning out very well. I appreciate your participation, Dora. And um, if I may, Pastor Coleman, if, if, if we are, have the... Uh, Brad, up here in the front, the gentleman with the, uh, with the glasses, the little gray-haired guy with the glasses, is, he's a barber. He's actually my barber. I can't remember his name. Nate. Nate. Oh, Nate. That's right. It's uh, Nathan Cianciola. Did I do that good? Yeah, that's the one. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the gentleman that found this, this building for us and told me about it, and I did some follow-up with him, and I'd like to you put your hands again together for uh, Nate. Thank you, Nate. He's a man. He's a man. Thanks. All right, folks, so I think we're ready to go. If everybody is ready, you can find your seats. I'd like to turn the microphone over to our moderator tonight. This is your beloved Pastor Coleman. Thank you, sir. Right, thank you. Welcome everybody here, glad you're here. Uh, new environment, new everything, but principles are still true. Nothing new. We live by the old principles, the Constitution, and the Word of God, and what's right, just, and so that's what we're here for. So don't worry about anything being new. Feel comfortable because you're with people who love God. Well, I don't know about everybody, but anyway, a lot of us do. And we love the Bible, and we love the Constitution, and we love the mature form of government that we the people by the people for the people. We're glad to be able to uh, be determiners of ourselves and have the government uh, with the consent of the government. <coughs> so uh, I hope you just kind of relax a little bit and realize uh, nice carpet. Well, they had nice carpet where we were at. In fact, we cleaned it, didn't we? But, uh, but nice chairs, all the same color. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. And uh, I'm glad you're here. And uh, so, let's start off with a word of prayer. Is there somebody who would like to come and volunteer to pray for us and ask God's blessing on our meeting tonight? Okay, sir, come on up. What is your name? Alfred Lindemann. Alfred Lindemann. Alfred Lindemann. Lindemann, all right. Heavenly Father, we come before you with open hearts and a thankful nature. We know that you're in charge. Jesus taught us to follow you in everything we do, to honor you, give you glory and praise. Tonight we come before you in open hearts, and we pray that you would fill our hearts and minds with your spirit, your Holy Spirit. Let this uh, assembly accomplish the things that you have set us for, Lord. Be with each and every one of us while we're here and also while we're here. Alrighty. Uh, Good timing, cousin. We don't have a flag, a flag tonight, so uh, we've all pledged allegiance, right? So, did you mean it? Absolutely. Okay. So, y'all mind if we skip that since there's nothing to look at? <laughs> okay. We know where our loyalties lie, and there's no question about that. So, we'll move on. Uh, I want to note that uh, obviously, by the crowd here, there is a quorum. We have plenty of people, so we'll call the meeting to order. And the first thing on the agenda is approval of the minutes of the last meeting. Oh, but the last meeting, there is no minutes because it, there was no meeting the last time. We already did that because the last meeting was actually not an official one, so picnic. So at uh, the last meeting, we did the approval of the previous meeting. So uh, that makes sense. So committee reports, next thing on the agenda. Uh, there's no treasury report tonight as Stoney's not with us. So. Well, all I know is that there's no, no, there are no minutes, so none were given, none were sent out. I don't know. That's all I know is there's no. Next meeting. Oh, okay. What it means that they're gonna do at the next meeting? My, my, my daughter's in college now, so we got her moved in. Sorry, sorry, Pastor, come on. The meeting before the park event. 
those minutes will be, we'll get those out before the next meeting. So the meeting that took okay. place before the park event, those have not been approved yet, and those will come out. <coughs> okay, the all right. So they were not done. Okay. All righty. Well, uh, okay. So committee reports. Uh, ambassador's report, Monty Wells. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> Ready for me already? Yeah, yeah, we're ready for you. <laughs> and let me say, if, if you're if you got a report ready, uh, if you follow along the agenda, uh, it'd save time if everybody be ready to come. So we'll have the ambassador report from Ambassador Monty Wells, then Republic of Arizona only governor's report from Hal Epperson, Governor Epperson. Uh, Jeff Smith, is Jeff Smith here? No, sir. He's not here and probably will not be, I guess, he's not here by now. So and then uh, Carla Barch will have Secretary of State report. Okay, my goals are up first. Well, thank you, Pastor Coleman. Hello again, everybody. Hello. Okay. Um, I thank everybody for coming. I really do. Uh, Greg and everybody that uh, took the time out to come down here. As you all know, we do stream. And um, it would be a lot easier, I'm sure, for most of you, if you wanted to, just sit at home and, and relax in your uh, comfy clothes. But uh, I sincerely appreciate you coming down here and joining us and helping us try to make this a success. My intent, of course, for the Maricopa County Assembly is due to the circumstances that was presented to us uh, via Stoney and, and Hal. Uh, these gentlemen, of course, you all know, or I hope you don't, you know, if, if you don't, I'll, I'll, I'll school you a little bit. They allowed us to use their facility uh, January a year ago. So, what well, we got? I, uh, nine months so a year and nine months we've been using their their facility to have the uh, amen. and uh, they they're very gracious to us they let us use of course the uh, uh their copy machines their electricity you know their facility with, uh, and, and there was some um um it just it became a little bit, uh, we just pushed the button a little too far, okay? And so um, we needed to find another place and they helped us, help motivate us to go ahead and get out and find another place. So as Nate, and, and I had a little committee together to, to find a place and Nate was driving around and, and came to this one. And so I followed up and here's where we are. And the way this works, of course, with this, with the hotel, I think I hope you read my email that I sent out. You know where the the price was six hundred bucks, and then it was, uh, you know, you got to have twenty five people eating, and then a hundred dollar non uh, non refundable deposit and that kind of stuff. They've been very gracious to me, and I was able to work out a deal under this particular night, where the fee for tonight is sixty five dollars and sixty five cents, which I've already paid them uh, with a, with a money order, and then of course we've already rewarded them from from the way I look at things because I've already got we have already got uh, 23 24 people that have already eaten so after we get through we're gonna go back in down into the bar area if you want to it's real nice all of you've been down there but if you haven't we're going back down there it'll be room for us to hang around and and, and rub elbows and and talk like we used to do at Howl's um, and, and then some other people are going to want to eat as well. So we've done good as far as producing revenue for the hotel. So I, of course, I'm going to be on the hot spot again to, to negotiate with the lady uh, after the fact, Monday, Tuesday, whatever, Tuesday, Wednesday, I guess. Um, but as they've already seen what, we, what we've done, what we brought to the table for them. You know, so that is a feather in our cap, and I hope to keep it in a scenario where um, what was discussed with the uh, with the menu with the bar with the gentleman that is head of the uh, restaurant. He said, next time, if you want to, we'll do a buffet with a couple of items. You know, we'll do uh, a chicken or a fish and or both. And um, dessert. That's my phone going off over there. And dessert. Greg likes it. Greg likes dessert. That's fine. We want to make sure Dick, Greg gets dessert. Is that you on drums? <laughs> How'd you know? <laughs> but anyway, so, you know, I'm trying to work this out on behalf of everybody. I understand the back pocket issue, you know. I mean, 
uh, forking out money for a meal. We didn't have to do that before. People could pitch a, 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 their money into the hat if they if they felt like they wanted to. Hello, Bill. You want to sit down, boss? Are you okay back there? You doing good, Bill Davis? Um, so we're kind of I'm doing this by ear. I've got a bad headache already. Been doing it by ear. You're banging your ear on the table trying to pick, work this thing. I said, oh, piano to a musician do it. But anyway, um, I hope to have this. Um, <laughs> worked, worked out for us pretty soon. That didn't go over your head, did it? <laughs> now, I, as the ambassador, I've been getting a lot of calls um, of a situation uh, involving our brother Billy Fouts. And I think you guys know that the officer that pulled the trigger is back on duty. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's don't, let's don't, here. Here, the reason, that's the reason I'm bringing this up. I get a lot of inquiries. I get inquiries from across the nation about this. So I'm, I'm sharing with you, uh, I'm giving you an update just to keep you abreast, and I'll do the same thing next time. Um, Jim Fitzgerald and Brad Luchek, when the incident happened, they took off up to Page, and they did their investigation on behalf of the Republic. Uh, and we have learned a lot about that police force up there. Um, and so when I learned that um, the officer was back on the, on the street and it was a done deal, I decided to take upon myself to make a phone call and call the Coconino uh, County Sheriff's Office and, and make a request for some documents. So I'm going to read to you what I wrote to them, and then I'll tell you what has transpired since then, if you're ready, okay? So it says to the Coconino County Sheriff's Records Department uh, and the uh, uh, report number, my name is Monty Lee Wells and my address, and it says, according to the Arizona State Public Information Act, Title 39, Article 2, and Freedom of Information Act, this is my official request for the Coconino County Sheriff's Record forward slash records <coughs> of the investigation involving William Dell Faust and Officer Sean Wilson of the City of Page, Arizona Police Department that occurred on July, June 19th, 2011, report number. I am requesting all items that are involved with this investigation, including but not limited to any audios, videos, pictures, witness statements, and supplemental reports. This request is meant to provide to, for, me, the results of the criminal, forensic, and internal investigation. If there is any reason why this may not be made available, please respond in writing with the name of the person making that decision and the Arizona Revised Statute of Code for that determination. Your cooperation in this matter is greatly appreciated. And this was written on August 19th. Uh, now, it's been some dead air since I, sent, since I sent it, but as a matter of fact, I got a phone call from, um, his name is Rex Guliani, I think. Some, uh, he's, a, he's the detective that was in charge of the investigation. And he's a very nice guy, a very nice gentleman, very cooperative. He told me that what he would do is he's going to send me the report that has been written out by the department and he's going to provide for me after it has been sanitized by that I mean the names and the uh, social security numbers and addresses of the people that were making uh, the uh, report the witness report he's going to provide that to me uh, on, on, on disk which of course I will be turning over to uh, uh, Jim Fitzgerald and um, um, uh, our chief investigator. Um, Carrie Shahan. Say again? Carrie? Yeah, I'm sorry. Carrie Shahan, um, who has a uh, um, sheriff's background as well to, to do the lead part on this. So I'm kind of an in between man that went after to get the information. So they're going to start sending me the information. And I just wanted, I felt, uh, because I get so many calls. And, and people inquiring about what's going on, you know, don't don't let this just dwindle. 
And of course, uh, Billy was, his heart and his spirit was with everybody that knew him. Uh, and uh, I, I, ha I have a heart that I can't let it just uh, uh, get into a lull state. My biggest uh, concern was that the uh, officer's cam in the, in, the, in the vehicle would get lost. Somehow it would grow legs or something. So I went after it, and um, you know we'll see what happened. I will keep you updated with that. I appreciate again everybody that, that came tonight. And um, with that said, I'm going to uh, bow out and give the podium back to Pastor Coleman. Thank you very much. All right, uh, Governor Everson, you're up next. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. All right, I like that. It's paying attention. Well, I've already been chastised from Monty for not wearing my tie, but I uh, woke up at three this morning and I had to do real work today. That you a test for my forehead being a little red. Notice that. <laughs> Actually, uh, hiking the tops of the mountains and uh, didn't feel like wearing a tie. So, anybody that's offended, too bad. <laughs> <laughs> And I got to get back up at three in the morning and go back down and do it again. So, uh, so real jobs are tough. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll give you an update on the the governor's calls. Well, the governor call last uh, Tuesday was over three hours long. I was on it for just over three hours, and they were still rambling on. Um, been some shifting and shuffling around. Uh, governor from California resigned. They got a new one elected in. Um, there's been a lot of a lot, a lot of growth in the republic. There's a lot of stuff going on where, um, you know, payoffs, uh, money, funding, financing, all the stuff that is, everybody was supposed to uh, expect is going to happen like tomorrow or the next day didn't happen. So um, when it didn't, there's been a lot of people that have uh, left republic or been discouraged or whatever. Um, but there there's a lot of shifting and shuffling. I will say this there. A lot, of, uh, a lot of officials that have been elected into your body politic here in Arizona uh, are solid as rocks. So I will tell you there's been just a couple uh, more of a lateral move from state rep to senator kind of position or from me from senator to the governor position. But other than that, most everybody here is, is in this thing for the long haul. 25 bucks. <laughs> anybody, anybody else's phone goes off, it's 25 bucks. So, so silence or, or vibrate, I'll, I'll give you that one for free. It's like a real meeting. Just, even though I don't have, even though I don't have a tie on, it's going to be official. <laughs> All right, everybody silent, everybody on vibrate. You can call me, call me, Jim. I know he's doing it right now. <laughs> It, it, it's, it's on my brain. It's okay. <laughs> it might vibrate, but it ain't gonna ring. <clears throat> anyway, um, I, I will tell you, Arizona. Th those are the new members that are here that are just here for the first time or uh, haven't been around a while. Uh, Arizona is solid. Uh, we we have been from the get go. We have uh, we've never wavered. Um, we have a full direction and course and we've got some great people in positions of uh, decision making and and to help give the state the republic what what we need um, you the body politic have elected these these people in so understand uh, the new people here that uh, we're lawfully able to do this we're not committing treason we're not doing anything to overthrow any governments because they're uh, de facto is a corporation so lots and lots of information if you stick around for a while you'll, you'll learn this stuff um, Arizona solid I'll tell you that it, it's, it's incredibly solid I'm, I'm happy to be part of it and anything you need from me you just I'm, I'm accessible uh, by phone by email Gregory are you going to transfer in the copiers down here and everything so we have access? No copiers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure for a fee they'll actually do that, but uh, no, Monty's waving his hand. Uh, yes. I just, I, I meant to bring that up, I apologize. We do need to focus on, on providing for, for this function right here, 
a maybe a small color copier that I can use for people who want, actually want to sign up with me, and I can make them their copies they can take home on the spot. But uh, and they're not very expensive these days, so we're going to be putting that in the basket. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah, we had at, at our office we had access to the copiers and, and and we could do a lot of things over there. It's been a little more inconvenience here, but I think the rooms are more comfortable. We're going to be able to do more things here, and uh, Stony won't have to be so grief stricken when he sees the carpet stained. And we did we, we did get it shampooed real good one time, but it, uh, it it went by the wayside again. So that's. That's the main crux of why we're here now, and I, I like it actually. I know it's a, it's a blessing for us to do this, so having my business partner being such a meticulous anal person. <laughs> Are I, you I, recording I, this? I will tell you. Yeah. Is this live streaming? <laughs> That's one of your senators. <laughs> Very anal. Uh, the guy cleans, he cleans his truck vents with a Q-tip, okay? He, he doesn't take his truck to get it done, he does it all himself. So. Hard worker, but very, very, very meticulous about things. And, and he just, yeah, it, it crushes him to see his office. And that is his building, by the way. Uh, the business is ours, the survey company is ours, but that, that building is his. And so I can respect uh, you know, him having hard work with the carpet being stained up. But again, I think with, when we talk to Monty, Monty's, Monty's fear is we wouldn't find a good place, and I think this is a great place. It's very close to where we work. Anybody? have problems with this thing yet. I, I, I don't see any just yet. Now, if you just get here, there's there's a bar next door, there's a restaurant. They said they would stay um, as long as there's people here. And if people are ordering food and whatever, we're, they're gonna stick around for a while. I, they only had one waiter. I don't think they expected us to, to have the turnout that we did. So I think there's over 25 people or something that ate already. And uh, many of us are gonna do it uh, afterwards, but uh, I think it's a great facility. Monty and I checked this out beforehand, and they did, you know, say this was a good place, and he's right on the money. Yeah. I, I, I personally think it lends uh, lends more credibility yeah. to our growth and, and and what we're about, what we're doing. We've moved out of the infant stage, and, yeah. and uh, yeah. it gives us it gives us room for physical growth yeah. too. Good, good. Yeah, that's, that's my feeling too. When we, we came and saw the place, we really liked it. And then when she told us that she wanted four or six hundred dollars, we were like, wow, you know, it's probably worth it. <laughs> we're too cheap. <laughs> we're a fledgling republic. <laughs> you know, we got a lot of a lot of great people, but we're not trying to make you guys rich with one meeting a month or two meetings a month. Anyway, they're willing to work with us on this thing, so I think it's a good. I I, I really like the facility. Um, so hopefully it'll work out. Um, if, if it doesn't, we'll roam to someplace just as nice or better. Um, better. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look at it. We look at everything as a as a as a blessing, and we'll uh, move on and make it make it work for us to our advantage. Um, what else do I want to bring up? With oh, I, I I want to bring up my DOT plates. Yeah. You know, I uh, <coughs> newbies are not going to know what I'm talking about here, but uh, you know, being being in Republic, being part of this Republic. Um, all we're saying is we want to be left alone. We don't want the, the corporation uh, in our in our uh, pockets and our wallets and our taxes and um, we just want to be left alone, you know, and, and they, they will spin it that, that we're terrorists, that we're enemy combatants, they've done it for years and years, um, but we just want to be left alone. We have constitutional and God-given right to be left alone. So. Amen. Yep. And in that, we have found the DOT plates, and they're not—they're not giving up easy. You know, their registration for vehicles and emissions and proof of insurance and all the tickets they write and all the tickets they're going to continue to write—they—they're <clears throat> not going to let loose. So, and I have been concerned, and I've been very um, frugal about uh, just disseminating the information out to everybody, unless you know. Uh, who you are, um, your sovereign rights, and know your standing, and know uh, that you're not in their jurisdiction. And in doing that, you can't just declare it verbally. You can, you can go in and fight them. Um, unfortunately, there's a thing called presumption of law, and uh, they will take you to court and uh, 
it, when you show up in court, you just agreed that you are a 14th Amendment slave citizen. So even if you've expatriated, you've still recontracted. So there's a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of people who know, know the rights here, a lot, of, a lot of people have really done a lot of work on this thing. That uh, so, Active state and expatriation is a huge thing with getting rid of these contracts, but they still want to keep uh, contracting. Yeah. So what happens if you don't appear in court? <clears throat> they send somebody well, out to... Here's the thing. You know, I, I've talked to you guys about it before. Um, when you do this thing, if you do the uh, USDOT, the USDOT thing, for a quick, quick recap, you're registering your legal person, your, your corporate fiction, um, what a lot of people might know as a straw man. Um, a lot of the videos and stuff I've seen lately, they say, you know what, straw man isn't that good a term because you know that's what they want you to do. They want you to say, yeah, I'm not representing that straw man. So, what are you talking about? They make it make us seem silly or loony. Uh, it really is a legal person, okay? A person. It's a corporation. That's what they act on. So, let's let's use that and and be very sparingly when you write when you're when you're telling the officer that you're sovereign because as soon as you do that, uh, they're gonna they're gonna assume you're gonna pull an AK out of the out of the window and just start blasting or try and get you out of your vehicle now. There's a few of us in the Republic that uh, have these DOT plates. Now, the, the main thing that you have to do, you have to have expatriated, you have to have rescinded and revoked your driver's license. You have to have. You've got to get rid of the contracts. You've got to rescind and do a power of attorney. You rescind power of attorney from the state of Arizona. If you have no contracts with them, they're less likely to give you the ticket. Now, um, I don't see John Osika and Lisa in. They've both been ticketed recently because John's got US DOT plates on all his, his automobiles, not his vehicles. They're automobiles, they're private property, and they're not required to be registered. Um, for those of you who don't know that, research, uh, there's stuff online, uh, all kinds of information on. Uh, you, have, you have the right to travel. Uh, you don't have to have a driver's license if you're not doing some commercial activity. They've brainwashed us to uh, have to have a driver's license. They brainwashed us to have to have a social security card. All of those are not mandatory, but they do commit you to being a U.S. citizen. When you do that SS5, when you do your social security card, uh, and most of us have to do that and have to operate in commerce, and that's what you do with your legal person, that corporation fiction that they act on behalf of, but you have to know your rights and standing as the, the living man, the living woman. You have to have paperwork filed in, the, in a public place and you have to give them notice. You can't just declare it at some point in time. And what we're finding is it's definitely not gonna argue with the police. You let them give you a ticket. You don't have a license, et cetera. Um, John and uh, Lisa both have rescinded and revoked their uh, driver's license, registration, um, they're not out of the system yet. It's been three or four weeks and they're still not out of the system. The cop pulled their name up, ran them, they're still in the database. Therefore, they get an extra ticket for not having their driver's license with them. Isn't that nice? Anyway, we're, we're, we're going to be fighting, I'll bring up Ron too. Ron, Ron got his, his plate actually in Mesa, Mesa, they're pirates, man. I'll tell you what. <laughs> and Thomas is <laughs> attest to that too. Um, Mesa confiscated Thomas's uh, motorized bicycle, and they stopped Ron McDowell, and they confiscated his plates, his private property, his automobile. He's same thing: rescinded, revoked registration, licenses, everything. Has his U.S. DOT plates that are registered and to his legal person as a non-commercial carrier has every right to do that but they confiscated his plate called it fictitious and fraudulent uh, I just had an appearance in court and I don't know if he wants to share a little bit later um, <clears throat> or even now um, but uh, he, he stood his ground and again he he's one that knows that he's been around this stuff for a while he's seen lots and lots of videos and lots and lots of research know you're standing in court when you go to court. Yeah, if you don't go to court, um, they, will, they will issue sanctions against uh, whatever corporate adhesion contracts you have still in place. Now, I'm, I'm assuming 
Uh, we haven't double checked yet with Ron, but uh, I don't know that he's gotten his letter like I have. I got my letter saying that my license, uh, per my request, was revoked, and they said, do not operate a motor vehicle. If you operate a motor vehicle, I need to have a driver license. So, whatever. I'm not, not driving, I'm not doing commerce, I'm traveling. So, I did get confirmation on that. Now, I don't know if Ron has yet. No? You haven't got that. Okay, so yeah. it, 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 it's so hard, once you're in the system, it's so hard to get out of the system. But little baby steps, we can do it. But uh, we talked uh, earlier about getting together and more people, you know, we get this out, enough information out sooner. The, the court appearances are good. I've been to court, I, I favorable things happened to me. John Osika went to the same judge the very next day. She was excellent with him too. Um, <clears throat> as long as you act in honor with the court and the judge and you don't blindside them and stand up and, and, and you know, get pushy or disclose maybe a trust that, uh, that you shouldn't. But they're, I will tell you, they're not honoring the private letter of rogatory that we're putting in. We're doing private letters to the judge in private chambers and they're not honoring them. They are moving forward with have to appear in court, and uh, so, like I say, they, they don't want to let loose of us. That's, it's a revenue that they don't want to let loose of. So if you are considering doing the DOT, you got to know you got to know you have the right to do it, you got to be able to go to court and tell them you can. You can continue to do it, exactly. But once you rescind the, the, the contract, which is the, the driver's license, they, they can no longer write you a ticket on your driver's license, so you're... There's no way you can do it. Um, Ken? If the driver's license is property of the corporate fiction, mm -hmm. what's wrong with just keeping it? You can. You can, absolutely. That's another way to go. To it. Ruben, Ruben said the same thing. You can keep your, keep your license. As long as you know how to go up here in court, you can keep it. The same thing with your plate. The plate, uh, if you want an Arizona plate, you want to continue to pay registration, et cetera, so you can do any, any, anything you want to do. There's remedy for doing that. As long as you know you're standing. You have to refute and rebut at the time you weren't operating in commerce. You have to be able to tell the judge, judge in confidence that you're, you're who you say you are. You're the real man and you're not the legal person that they, they cited. So, yeah, another one? Yeah. If, mm -hmm. if they are not honoring your letters, mm -hmm. and they're dishonoring you. That's true. They lose. <clears throat> Right. Well, and that's, I, I just got a letter yesterday uh, for, I, I haven't been stopped yet. I mean, that's since I had my, uh, my run-in with a DPS back in November uh, 2010, <clears throat> which that ticket all went away, but I got a 60-day extension and I got, I did a lot of other remedy uh, with that, but I, yeah, I, I, I got rid of that privately, but it took a while. The, uh, my company trucks are not commercial vehicles either, they're tools. It's a lot of people don't understand that um, just because you have a, a company and you have a company truck, that company truck is not carrying persons or commercial activities. It's not co carrying passengers for money or, or freight or something for money. So it really, my trucks are basically like my survey equipment, like a, like a shovel or a pick for me to dig for property corners. It's, it's a tool. I, I'm allowed to have a tool to do what I do in commerce. But I'm not doing commercial activity because I'm not hauling people or freight for money. That's that's the clear cut. So, yeah, Gus. <clears throat> when you send in the uh, letter of resignation, uh, mm -hmm. not resignation, but rescind rescinding, rescind, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> don't you give them a certain amount of time to respond? If they don't respond, mm -hmm. they back with us. Sure. Sure. No, in commerce, in commerce is 21 days. Yeah, I give you 21, 21 days to refute or rebut that this is not a lawful way I can handle my affairs. And if you refute or rebut, I request that you write me in writing under penalty of perjury, in full detail, explain the deficiencies deficiencies of my understanding of this process. And they won't do that. So. But see, in Arizona, and like several states, there's actually an extra form. Once you've committed to that, there is a cancellation of ID or a driver's license form. And if you don't fill that form out, they won't do what your letters tell you anyway. I, I, I did uh, 
I recorded the county recorder's office. I did affidavit, sworn affidavit of truth, um, saying that whereas I understood I'm not, uh, not a driver, I'm a traveler, and I understand my rights. And I did, did all this declaration in a public record. And still, I give them a copy of that to the, the director of the Transportation Motor Vehicle Division of ADOT. And it, it should be easy. But a lot of times it's not easy. They, they, you know, it takes it takes weeks and weeks and maybe months to get everything. Done. There's all these contracts, and you got to understand too. When you sign your name on an application, you've energized that document. You've you've created something of value that they're going to be able to start collecting revenue from because you're going to get tickets and stuff. And they monetize it. You know, I won't go into detail, but uh, they they create a QSIP number and that's bought and sold. Okay. They hypothecated the Ponzi scheme. Everything you've ever signed, they've hypothecated. Okay, driver's license, registration, everything. They don't want to give that up. Just because you rescind it, they still, unless you do it perfectly, they want to keep that bond in place. They want to keep getting the money and interest off of that account. So they won't. It's a, they have a hard time letting go of their money. Okay, so that's that's what they're doing now. The guy that uh, is driving one of my company trucks got stopped again the second time. I, I. I was a power of attorney and took care of the whole matter and we're done. Three weeks after that he got stopped again. I've done separate letters, but I specifically named the judge this time. I put the presiding judge down in the municipal court. They still, I, I'm sure she didn't even look at it, Roxanne Song Ong didn't even look at it, I'm sure. Somebody just processed it and sent the letter back out. So Jeff just recently got another letter saying he was uh, he, he was granted his extension from his previous request, <laughs> which wasn't what we requested. Requested him to, to zero all liabilities and take care of this. I appointed the judge actually as beneficiary and trustor of my trust account. I, I appointed the judge as trustee and I told him to settle settle the matter. So <laughs> next time I go to court, I will be uh, taking an invoice and I will be filing for damages for having to appear because my letters were contract. I amended their contract and I put in there that uh, if you continue to pursue this without acting in honor, I will come back for damages. So they, they know what I'm doing. I did that with a letter originally and the judge that I saw last time were, again, Bill, Bill said she, was, she wasn't nervous, she was pissed. She was shaken, I know she was shaken, but she was mad because I got out of having to pay $666. So they don't like that. But this time I didn't get for expired registration, we got for no current registration. But they'll try and get you for everything. Lisa got, I mean, absolutely everything. No proof of insurance, everything. But again, they still have contracts in place. Until you get those contracts locked out, there's no way they can they can lock you to that, that legal person. You gotta get rid of those contracts. Great. Yeah. You, then you have to go to court and prove it. <clears throat> yeah, you still have to see the judge. That's the problem. And you got to be willing to go see the judge. Not a lot of people aren't comfortable going to court. Going, to, I mean, every, people are nervous. They don't. We don't do this stuff. This well, is yeah. new stuff. If you're not used to it, if you don't go to court and watch how they do and how they operate. It, it's it's money. It's all about commerce. They just want money and they want it to all go away. Just, Alan, it may help for yeah. me to just say that they did not give me a citation for no registration because I had the documents that I had filed with ADOT. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the green card saying that they had received them, and I gave those to them. And I think that's why I didn't do anything about registration. Right. And it seems too that uh, the DPS, the Highway Patrol, can actually um, through their computer system or their database checks, they can find our US DOT number. They can enter that US DOT number and the number, and that comes up with a copy of my MCS 150 form. The MCS 150 form says that I'm a non-commercial carrier just registering my legal person as a non-commercial carrier. They have that and they can find it. Local cops aren't doing that. Mesa Police, uh, City of Phoenix is the one that got my, the guy that works with me. Um, and and I, I think they're actually targeting this right now because John just had some information yesterday. I was hoping he was here to share it with you, but he went down to ADOT Motor Vehicle Division and talked to them and showed them the documents that he was trying to do and saying that you know that they're still showing the the contracts that they still have driver's licenses etc and they the lady asked him is this some kind of constitutional thing that you're doing here you know this remedy or whatever you're trying to do is this constitute what i mean why are you doing this and he says well yes yeah, something like that so 
they, they know what we're doing, but the cops are being given orders that anything that doesn't have a, a state plate, give it a ticket, no matter what. So they're, they're not letting go. So if you put a US DOT plate, if you do all your paperwork, you better be ready to go talk to a judge. Now, the cops aren't gonna know it. They, they're, they've been trained to, all they, all they do, it, and it was funny, Lisa, Lisa asked the cop, you, you know, I have my constitutional rights, I have this and I have that. He says, I don't know anything about that. I just write tickets about statutes and the law. Mm. That's all I do. Mm. But she, he, this cop that actually stopped her uh, earlier in the week, he threatened her and said, next time I see this vehicle, I'm going to impound it, I'm going to give you another ticket. So he automatically harassing and threatening. So great one. There's a, there's a presumption that takes place on the side of the road or in a court system where they are, they're becoming the administrator and the beneficiary. And you need to tell them that you're the administrator and the beneficiary and that he's the public servant or trustee if it comes to that. You know what I mean? If they yeah. won't recognize your status by your paperwork, then you can tell them that. And then if, mm -hmm. if they still want to press them, like you said, you give in, take, it, take it away. That's it. Yeah, you, exactly. you can't sue them because they're... <coughs> Their name's not on the ticket because it's in the box, so that's you know it takes it off the ticket. Right. So you just don't want to create controversy, but there's a presumption that takes place, and I thought it should be mentioned that that's what we do when we get pulled over. They automatically presume they're administrator and beneficiary, and you're the trustee, mm -hmm. and you need to turn that around right away, right, right at the very beginning. Yeah, I mean, the, the main thing you need to tell them immediately is be nice and be personal. Say, I don't consent to this stop. I don't consent and I don't contract. Who are you? And my name is Hal. Who are you? Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it, you you gotta you gotta try and start. You know, what I mean, it just de it depends on their demeanor. I mean, I had one that was just Nazi from the get go, and there was no talking to this guy. But I mean, we we've got to educate them because they've been as brainwashed or more brainwashed than we have. Michael. I recently read a document about another approach that's not really that similar, but what it recommended was was when you have a dealing with an officer in that situation, the first thing that you ask for is, is his letter of mark and reprisal. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, he, because yeah. he's operating as a privateer. And he probably doesn't even understand what that is. Blue, of course. Right, he, exactly. Well, might want to get them Right, right. Well, and, 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 and that's the thing. If you if you understand, see, I put my private letters rotatory together for the judge, and I put right in there, and I, I put in there, I said, according to Manta.com, uh, you know, the City of Phoenix Municipal Court is a corporation running for profit, as well as the City of Phoenix Police Department is a corporation running for profit. And I understand what this process is doing, but I have no contracts with you. I have no contracts. You had no consent. You have to have, con have, to have consent. You have to have my signature on there to agree to a contract, and I don't. So that's how you can go into court. The judge will get you out. But the cop's not going to know that. He knows how to write tickets. That it. Um, in addition to what he was saying, the officer at the very end, he will say, you know, do you have any questions? And he'll keep asking, do you have any questions? Are you sure? Do you have any questions? And I believe that that concludes their administrative hearing that you're getting without your knowledge. Yeah. So that's that's the finality. That's is, do you have any questions? Court, right? You're on the side of the yeah. road. You don't know. Yeah, they are. Yeah, I mean, that if you... Yeah, you don't. Letter, well, yeah, at the end, don't ever say no. I, I'm okay, or I don't have any right now. Don't what, say that. No. So what do you say? Keep, keep it don't open. Answer the question. Ask another question. I, I don't Just consent. Keep I don't consent. I don't contract. I that's it. I don't understand. They just keep saying that. That's it. Now, all of you out there that are secure party creditors that have done Tim's documents, there's a thing called legal notice and demand, and in. When you recorded that in the county recorder's office, it said any time you encounter somebody like that who's a police officer, it is your policy to provide them that legal notice and demand. So how many, how many of you are doing that? Well, I'm ready. I'm clocked. I'm ready to go. Now, <laughs> you, you, they will probably dishonor you. And then if, if those of you who don't know about this document, and read it, it's a very powerful seven-page document, and it says in there, I am not a 14th Amendment citizen. I'm a free man. I have rights, I have recorded documents in public record, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You're refuting or rebutting their presumption that they have some type of jurisdiction over you. You are supposed to be giving that document to them. I did that to the Highway Patrol and he still tried to drag me out of my truck. But they'll dishonor it, but you still have obligation because that's your policy now when you've done that. Tom. When I, when I got pulled over, I told the guy, there is no soliciting and I do not consent. 
<laughs> and, and then he goes, well, I need your ID. I said, just as long as you understand, there is no soliciting and I do not consent. And he goes, if you don't give me your ID, I'm going to have to take you down and you know arrest you. I said, great. Do you, I will be ha more than happy to give you my ID as long as you understand. Do you understand that I do not consent? I mean, there's no soliciting and I do not consent. And he goes, yes, I understand. <laughs> good for you. So he stands under. Yeah, I know. That's, that's huge. That, that is huge. And, 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 and understand it, and those of you that are, that are, that are new maybe not know, they, they have lapel mics on. They have video cameras on. You are being recorded before they stop you. They're going to use everything against you. So what you do is use your knowledge and your words against them, and you entrap them the way they do you. And so you don't want adversarial, but, I mean, that's, that's just a thing. You, I, I, I'm still doing it. I mean, it, I've talked to a couple of people, Ruben in particular, is like, you know, how much time are you wasting doing this? Is it really saving you guys any money? Absolutely not. I've wasted hours and hours and hours doing these private letters and doing this stuff and going to court. But you know what? It's the principle of the thing. I don't care. I, I don't care. It's going to cost me money. I don't care. I want my foot up their ass. <laughs> well, that's how, you know, <laughs> you know. You know, this is how they get us, is they, they make it so convenient just to pay. So right. if you make it really, you know, how come they don't charge you $5,000 for getting a driving, t a, 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 a speeding ticket? Well, that's because they know all the slaves are gonna, not going to pay it, and the, the system can only handle a, a certain well, fraction of those people to be, able to, to be able to, you know, just stand up and say no. And that's why they're counting on us is, you know, make, let's make it real easy to pay. So then, you know, the old slaves go through the, the chute to get slaughtered. They, they're, they're no different than Walmart, man. They've got, they've got sales. They, they'll talk to you in private and say, look, we can, we can settle this whole thing. They'll do it. That's they, why they make a driver license so affordable. Huh? <laughs> so you'll be able to pay and pay. Well, if people have people, we've been brainwashed. We don't, we don't need one. I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a great commerce. It's great commerce for them. Okay. Any questions out there? I, I want to. I got, I got Jim Fitzgerald already yelling for he's back there holding the sign up shut up. I'm getting a hook right now. <laughs> Anything I can answer real quick, I'd do that. Yes. Is that with all the police forces in this town? I, I you know I believe I believe that most every single one of them have probably they're coordinating they're coordinating and talking to them and saying, Bring the rain. I, I feel they're they're saying bring the rain. I haven't stopped yet, but I was stopped about three weeks ago by Glendale. Yeah. The truck I was driving had been totaled, okay? okay. I hadn't had the, the plate changed yet because they made it very difficult for me. Okay. So the day I got it, I went to get a tag on it so I could drive it, you know, to, to have Travel. it uh, tested. They wouldn't give me one because it had, was a salvage title. So I got real angry about that. Mm -hmm. When I went down the thing, I had to wait hours. It, they may not even see me that day. It was going to cost me more money than what I had. I just, I went home. The plate was good until the end of August. So, Glendale police officer on cactus between 51st and 59th pulls me over. All alone, doing a speed limit, you know. And I says, I know he knows something. The plate had been pulled because of the thing was a salvage vehicle. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he got out, got my, my driver's license, I get my driver's license. And, uh, you know, I didn't have insurance on it. My driver's license was good. Uh, my uh, didn't have registration, obviously. Didn't have the title with me. And, and the plate was no good on the truck. He turned out, he told me he was a, you know, I got into a conversation with him. He told me he was a Christian. And I started from that angle. By the time I got through, he let me go free. No tickets. Thanks. Took the plate off the back of the truck. I then got the truck to, to a place where it was safe, you know, about three miles away, man, just dodged more cops. And anyhow, the, the next day, which was a Friday, I went over and had it, uh, ran it through their system. And uh, the lady there, she said, I can't pass it because it's got a broken tail on it. I said, wonderful. She said, but you've you got to. Yeah, we can't hear you. Okay. But she says, you got to go through this, you know, you got to have it inspected. I said, well, what good is it going to do? You're going to fail me. She said, yeah, I'm going to fail you. She said, well, tomorrow when you come back, she said, you won't have to go through this. So the next morning I went back and they put me through. I ended up putting the thing to both cops at the site where they let me go on the tickets. 
That was bold. But you recontracted. Very you got bold. Yeah, I know, but I was very bold with, with that. Yeah. No, I mean, you know what? Like, like, there's some good cops, there's some bad cops. Yeah, I know. It's just it's like everybody. All right, one more question. To totally different vein. Do we have any idea what our enroll uh, enrollment's not the word I want? How many new citizens of our republic do we have in Arizona at this point? Monty, what's the count? Is it just in just in Maricopa or no, you're in, the, in, the, in the state? In the state. Uh, the in state, the state. We're probably right around the number is probably around four thirty somewhere in there. Not many. Four hundred thirty people. 430, that's it. There's a lot more than we had when we first started, though. There's a lot. There, trust me, there's more pissed off people out there than 400 people. Well, yeah. They just, they just haven't found us yet. Yeah, exactly. And that's it. And, and you're right. When we get strength in numbers and when we keep, I, I continue to keep getting wins in court. And I know God, I don't have no problem going out with power of attorney because I can do anything I want in power of attorney. It works, works really good. Um, so, anything else? I'll cut it off. So, we went. okay, already. Sorry, Jim. Sorry, James. I went to a business get together with a bunch of people, long story short, and there was a lawyer lady there. So she was having a few drinks and afterwards I approached her and I laid out a bunch of questions, you know, the, the marriage license being a contract with the state and how they own your children and the driver's license and everything. And she, and she just let it all out. It's all true. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Oh, you, she you knew. Agree. You agree. Right. You signed. You agree. You know, a your example was a boy who 15 years old on a driver's license. What can you do to him? Nothing. Why? Because he never agreed. So on and on and on and on on the questions, he just let him all out there. Yeah, that's wow. true. That's true. That's true. Brett, Brett had a real good conversation with one attorney. He knew nothing. He knew nothing. <laughs> and we talked about that too. He's like, he's like, well, what about this? What about this? He didn't know what bar meant. He did. I mean, he went. He ran him through the gauntlet, and the guy just failed miserably. But I would say that's 99% of the attorneys out there. They don't. They don't teach him the secret stuff. They teach him just like cops. Teach him. This is a statute. If you're speeding, this is it. Done. 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 You're finished. So it's all about contract. And if you can get out of your contracts, that's the main thing. Um, that it. That it. I want to say something, Brad, real quick. Coleman, just give me half a second. What do you need? I, I just let me do this. I, I just I want to I want to share this with you. Okay, I was with Hal along with Brad when when he got stopped on by the highway patrolman. Okay, now cut it out. So, so what I'm trying to share with you, I mean, it, you want to you want to pick your fights. Okay, when Hal got stopped by the highway patrolman coming back from Flagstaff, this officer there was no. You, you couldn't talk to him the way Hal is explaining that you can talk to him. He had an attitude, and it was an attitude that you are not going to win. You're going to do exactly like I tell you, and you will do it as I tell you, or you will go to jail right now. And it uh, just so happened that we had a few uh, firearms in the vehicle. But the point is, is I'm, I'm just wanting to share with you that you'll know, I, I know of, of, of several of you folks out here, and I know there's several of you folks that could probably hold your own if you want to pick that fight. But imagine, if you will, you're going down the highway and you're on your way to see your, to your, your friend's house, your mother, another city or whatever. And do you want to pick that fight out on the highway and it's going to end up to a, a three or four hour ordeal when they're calling supervisors and stuff like that? Because you can still go ahead and do battle when you get to a courtroom, okay? But um, I just, uh, I was there with Hal. When, when they jerked his chain, and, uh, and Brad and I both, and we're sitting there going, yikes, <laughs> you know, well, what are they doing to him? And you know, and, and the lights, it, it's at night, and the lights are shining on a vehicle, and you can turn around, you can't see anything, because the lights are shining at you. And it was it was pretty tough. It was pretty tough. Ha how handled it the intelligent way? Okay, officer, you know, he gets out, he stands in front of the car, and he makes, he makes it loud and verbal. I want to make sure that this is being recorded, okay? And I want to make sure this is against my will, and it's a forced type of issue. Uh, so it was, a, it was a very scary event. I'm just wanting to emphasize, if it comes up on, on you at some point, and you happen to pick the officer that had a fight with his wife that morning before he left the house, you're probably better off just to say, okay, well, I don't have my driver's license with me. You know, or however you want to handle that, that's up to you. If you want to say you are driving, then when you hand in that driver's license, that's what you're doing. If you want to get off on the other path, 
you could say, I don't have anything with me, and just give me the ticket, and then you go to court and you fight it that way, or you work at it that way. So, I, uh, my two cents worth, but it was very, uh, a very sticky situation that night. And um, uh, again, Hal handled it uh, intelligently just to, just to back off, let the officer have his way, and he ended up beating that ticket later. That's my point, okay? Yes, congratulations. All right. Or he could say, I'm willing to go to jail. Are you willing to lose your job? <laughs> yeah, anyway, see what that would do. Did you do okay. that? Have you done that? No, no, I'm willing to. Now, I'll put them in the hot seat. I don't mind putting them. I don't like putting the hot seats, so I'll put them in the hot seat. Okay? Are you willing to risk your job sending me to jail over this? Go ahead. Yeah. Take me. Anyway. But hey, that's me. Okay. <laughs> I'm different. Okay, uh, Carla, Secretary of State's report is next. Um, I really, really, really want to know your guys' thoughts. Um, the things that you like, the things that maybe you don't like so much, um, ideas that, that's fine, ideas that you have, things that you want to talk about um, for education after the meeting, questions that you have, just things that you think about, you know, what's um, HJR 192, what's, um, just whatever. The pieces of paper that you guys have, I would like you guys to write your questions on their comments. I know that you all have them, probably only about three quarters of you have papers, there's more in the back, but I would like you to put your comments on there and then either hand it to me, just fold it up, or put it on this table and I'll collect them at the end or the table in the very back. Uh, just really quick, what's some ideas for um, a question that you might have? And by the way, with just the questions, maybe like in the next meeting we can go through some of those really quick. Um, that way everybody's educated on it. But just let's get some ideas just, just for questions. Uh, I'd like to see some uh, role playing yeah. Okay, role playing. Okay. Okay. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but. Go to the judge. Just, just a second, point of order. Uh, this would be good for like new business uh, to, to make suggestions for the meeting, but I think we want to hear a Secretary of State report, you know, related to right. the position. Right, right. And this is what I'm starting with okay. for that. So anyway, if you could do that, and then we will, I will follow up on that next time, and I will address all of them. Again, give them to me after, put them here or in the bag. Can we, can we send you an email with that? Yes. What would that be? Fine. Carla Barchi at AOL.com. If you want to include your name, phone number, that's okay. Optional, not required. Thank you. Also with that, things for Arizona as a whole, but also things for Maricopa County and things for our assembly, include it all. Are you taking questions? We'll do that later. Go ahead. Would you please would you please tell us what your role is as Secretary of State for the Republic? and what you hope to accomplish in that as we roll out what we're doing. I don't get the questions and how that connects to where you see Arizona right now, what uh, processes you see that you're engaged in or need to be engaged in, we need to be engaged in as we move forward. Could okay. kind of touch I'll address on that. that next time because that's too big for today. Just some of it. Just give me a little well, bit. Well, Billy, before he died, he spent like, Boy, what, an hour going through the Secretary of State, he gave an actual handout several pages long with all of the the job requirements for Secretary of State. I mean, he spent, what, a good, do you guys remember that, like an hour just yep. on that? Yep. A lot of it deals with commerce, though, to answer your question in short. Right. Okay. So I think in the future, what the people are wanting, represented by uh, uh, his question, is uh, in your role as Secretary of State, how is that going to work in the uh, 
because we are an interim government, what steps can you do to lay the foundation for the future? Is, is, that also interests me, by the way, also. Uh, every, by the way, everybody, if you have a position, you should be trying to figure out, should be, you know, it's, this is of the people, by the people, for the people. We should be figuring out how we're going to do things and set up things. I'm just making the comment as moderator, taking some leeway here, but, but, but you know, as, as a representative, I am looking at what I can do. Uh, for example, well, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm going to make an announcement, an announcement time. Of what I want to do as representative uh, for your, uh, for you folks. So uh, anyway, I would just encourage all officers to look at your position and your, your find your responsibilities and figure out how you're going to uh, make uh, work them out, set the parameters and the foundation in this uh, de jure republic. Okay, that's it for uh, the reports. So next thing is uh, old business. Uh, and Brad Lucek, Representative Lucek, is going to update us on republic IDs. How you doing, guys? Hey, hey, hey. I'm going to give an update. Um, we've been, um, we have Coconino County, Yavapai County, Maricopa County, and Pima County that have been meeting together, uh, deciding on the IDs for the Republic of for Arizona. Um, and it's been an interesting discussion. But I wanted, for some of the new people and some people that haven't been in the meetings for a while, I want to explain what these IDs actually mean and what, how that's going to be part of your remedy in some of these issues as far as travel. Right now, you could have an ID. You can actually make one up if you wanted to. But there's going to be a difference with the Republic. One of the things is that when um, President uh, Tim Turner goes to the Hague and documents what we done in November 2010, then we, the Republic will have official nation status. And what's important about that is that it gives a jurisdiction. And jurisdiction is a big piece of the ID. Yeah, right. And it does address a lot of the issues that we were just mentioning on, on uh, traffic stops and all, especially in court. Um, I've uh, been working with Rick Weiner. Um, he's a head of the Rangers for the Republic and we've been working together for a long time on the IDs. Uh, one of the key parts that kind of um, delayed it was getting nation status, because that's very important. As far as the committee itself, we have uh, vetted out all the different IDs and, and different content. We're gonna lock that up here um, after the meeting a little bit and meet a couple more times. Um, but I wanna give you an update where we are now. And some of the issues that came up in the discussion what is fundamentally an ID? We came down to the conclusion, obviously, a passport that's recognized internationally is a fundamental structure of an ID, the content of it. Only modification, obviously, well, there's several modifications, but fundamentally, the birth date might not be the month, day, and year. It might be the month and the, and the year. Um, elements of that. Um, we have a design. That I, I don't have with me today, but when we do finalize it, I will have that for you. We will have a system where on if you get pulled over with a travel warrant, which is what it's going to be, 